So let's look at what the allegations are against Dr. Jackson. They're outlined in a new report by uh, Democrats on the Senate Veteran Affairs Committee, which says the claims come from 23 current and former colleagues of Jackson, many of them still in uniform. They allegedly told the committee Jackson engaged in questionable prescribing practices and was called the candy man because he would give out prescriptions without the necessary paperwork. The report recounts it causing chaos. One story going like this, missing Percocet used for pain tabs once threw White House medical unit into a panic. It turned out Jackson had provided a large supply to a White House military office staffer. Jackson also allegedly had private stocks of controlled substances. The report says a nurse told the committee that Jackson wrote prescriptions for himself. The committee also says they were told about multiple counts of drunkenness while on duty, including incidents during overseas travel. And according to the same report, uh, one time Jackson could not be reached when needed because he was passed out drunk in his hotel room. The reports also recount one tale of how at a Secret Service party, Jackson got drunk and wrecked a government vehicle, something Jackson not only denied to NBC News, but said, well, wouldn't that be provable if it had happened? The other big allegation, according to the Democratic report, is that Jackson created a hostile work environment. He was described as toxic, abusive, and volatile, with the day-to-day -day environment portrayed as walking on eggshells. Uh, the witnesses also told the panel that there was a constant fear of reprisal. This is the stuff that John Tester and his committee uh, heard. Okay, but again, these are just allegations. Correct. You know, we don't know them in its entirety. You know, right. we're saying candy man, it's a drug. Let's be let's let's be clear. It's a sleeping pill, which lots of doctors, lots of corporate doctors give employees if you're going on long trips. So watching him go through this, the question is, does this destroy his life? Right. So I was, I was I wasn't here yesterday when we were, you were talking about this first. And I, I sort of agree with you. I, I, I think everybody going crazy about the Ambien stuff is uh, is a little different. The idea that Percocet, uh, which is an opioid in the current environment when it comes to opioids is involved, may change the discussion a little bit. But but we should have it. The other thing we have to point out, there's a difference between are you qualified for a job and are you qualified to for run a cabinet the, position? Not just a cabinet position, the second biggest department in the entire U.S. government, second only to the Department of Defense, 375,000 workers. But it also workers. involves a different vetting process. Correct. If I want to come work at NBC, there's a background check. Right. That is far different from what I would have to go through if I wanted to be a U.S. senator. And I have or, to or know approved by the Senate. those are two different things. Yeah. And it's one of the reasons many people don't run for office. Joining us now, Art Kaplan, medical ethicist with NYU Langone Medical Center in New York City, and our friend Steve Karnacki, MSNBC national political correspondent. Art, to you. Okay, Ronnie Jackson's not going to be VA secretary, but what does it mean about being the White House doctor or, or, a, or doctor. a doctor? It means a lot. Those allegations are so serious that first and foremost, the medical board, I'm not sure if he's in Virginia or D.C., wherever he is, they got to take a look. You can't prescribe Percocet to yourself or others and not document. That would be opioid abuse that's serious. I agree the Ambien thing, that's not a death sentence. It's trouble, but it's eh, one of those things that uh, you may get by with, not a narcotic. And the accusations of drunk on duty, another right. severe uh, charge that uh, has to be pushed. Look, I know everybody's blaming the Democrats, including Trump, but Johnny Isaacson, the guy who chairs this committee, said, there's enough here, I'm going to delay the hearings. Mm -hmm. He thought these charges were serious, and I can't imagine a medical board would. One other Does the thing. medical board take action now? I mean, sure. I'm sure the president's like, come I on back to work. They're compelled to they investigate to. it, right? These are like public allegations. I think they're going to have to move. And the other question is, do we all want to really trust Trump's physical? Remember all that's the hoo-ha about I, I, that? That's what I, my first thought. Is that, how legit is this now? Steve, uh, to, to Art's point, the president absolutely is blaming Democrats for Jackson's withdrawal. Let's listen to what he said on Fox this morning. An incredible man, respected by President Obama, gave him his highest rating. You saw what President Obama said. Yeah. President Bush, he was the doctor to President Bush, to President Obama and the family. He's been my doctor, and he runs a fantastic operation. The Democrats are obstructionists. It's horrible what they're doing. Uh, they're not approving people. They're taking them out to the maximum 30 hours. That's a lot of time, 30 hours, to interview people that are going to be approved. 
So, Steve, you know, when the de the Republicans on the House Intel Committee released a report without getting the, uh, Repub the Democrats involved, we were critical of that. We thought that was highly partisan. This is just the Democrats on the Veterans Affairs Committee. Does Trump have a point? Is this, is this partisan? Well, I think the distinction here is it's the Democrats who went public. It's Tester who took point in airing these things publicly. But as the doctor was just saying, the Republicans on the committee, including Johnny Isaacson, said, no, we do need to take a look at this. We are going to extend this now. We're going to have an investigation. I think really that's what happened here ultimately with, with Jackson. The, the example I'm thinking back to, it goes back a number of years, but a man named John Tower got nominated to be mm -hmm. defense secretary by the uh, first President Bush. There were accusations of what they called carousing back then, drinking Ooh. and carousing. And what happened with that investigation, it, the whole investigation played out. The committee looked into it. They paused it for months. All these other things started coming out during the investigation. He ended up taking this formal pledge saying, I swear if you confirm me, I will never have a, a drop of liquor on the job. He still wasn't confirmed. But I think that kind of process, it was clear with Republicans saying we will investigate, right. that kind of process was likely here. But you said Tester came forward. Could they have done this privately? Or differently. Or differently. It, but it, it looks like it was a fait accompli here. It looks like the Republicans on this committee, from what you're hearing from Isaacson now, they were prepared to investigate this thing. I think there might have been so some the concern might there. Be going out on a limb saying this is about a. And we're saying the politics. You under, I think from a political standpoint, you understand why he yep. would he would try to pin this on Democrats. They think Tester's a vulnerable incumbent this year, so they're going to try to score some points. And yes, Tester did yep. make a point of going out there publicly in a way Republicans were hesitant to. But I think this committee was probably going to be moving in this direction. All right, I want to go back to the ethics that are, that surround doctors. We, we know for all of time there have been ethics that doctors have to deal with. Do we think that um, hard partying or, or, or drinking, I mean, we haven't got but the distinctions Ali, on this we stuff. We don't know that it's hard partying no, or I'm drinking. I'm saying if it if were, true, if, true, if true, if true, this would be a real professional compromise of ethics drunk on duty. Look, off hours, you can kind of do what you want in terms of alcohol and so forth. But if you know, like a pilot, mm -hmm. you're going to be called upon to take care of the president, other high-level officials, and you are drunk. Uh, this is an interesting point. With pilots, you've got... saying that he's treating the president drunk, they could be on an overseas trip, but then he goes right, to dinner. Right, that's what I'm asking. And at dinner, you he might get it's drunk. It's the same as pilots. They oh. can't go out drinking if they know they might be called right, upon there's to a, fly there's the a plane. Time you got a time yes, limit. Because that's because you have to fly a plane the next day. But if this, you're is a, a doctor, this is the doctor, the president. Doctor, you don't want the president to, to have a heart attack in the middle of a oh. flight and then say, here's the guy who's going to resuscitate him. But he's asleep because he's drunk. You, you, can't, you can't have that. Great point. Hey, MSNBC fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down there and click on any of the videos here to watch the latest interviews and highlights. You can get more MSNBC for free every day with our newsletters. Just visit msnbc.com newsletters to sign up now.